Okay, Yorick, today we're going to do a review on the Franklin battery, and you're going to tell us why you think this Franklin battery is better than your battery, the Tesla Powerwall. I wish I could use my vehicle to load function on my car to charge the battery like I can with the Franklin. Yeah, definitely, and there's a whole heap of other things that we think are better about the Franklin battery compared to the Tesla Powerwall. Mm. I'm going to be telling you about some round-trip efficiency testing that I've been doing with my data logger, not only on this battery, but a bunch of other batteries as well. Well, let's get into it. Okay. Okay, you know, who are Franklin anyway? So Franklin is an AC coupled battery manufacturer from the USA. They've been around since 2019 and they're actually named after Benjamin Franklin, who did you know coined the term electrical battery? Which is after artillery ba battery, right? That group of guns in an army or something like that, which I thought was kind of ironic. Yeah, or well, group of battery cells. Yeah, okay. So US manufacturer, they actually, no, US company, they yeah. manufacture in China. That's correct. So why did we choose to use this um, battery anyway for this solution? So this house, we've got, an end phase system so we've got micro inverters up in the roof and so we need to have a battery where we can convert it from the ac into dc okay so it's an ac coupled battery it's can i explain that really quickly yeah let's go and get into that okay so ac power is a power that you get out of your power point it runs your fridges and all your appliances right yeah batteries are dc power like your little AA battery and this battery and the battery in your car. Solar panels also produce DC power. A normal system, we would go, uh, or a DC coupled system, we would go DC from the battery, yep. from the panels, down through the inverter and DC into your battery and then DC back and then only then do we change it into AC. So and, and that's how Phronius works, Songro, Sig Energy. Most batteries at the moment, right, yeah. uh, uh, have, have turned to this DC coupled solution because there's only one DC to AC conversion. So you kind of think that's going to be more efficient. With this situation here, we've chosen an AC, AC solution. So what's happening is we're getting the DC power from the panels on the roof. We're going into an inverter, going to AC. We're going um, then back to DC again to charge the battery, then back to AC. It's sort of DC, AC, DC, AC. Mate, it's a long way to the shop if you want a sausage roll. It is, Mark. So, But why did we choose the AC coupled solution? Well, we had no choice here. Because we've got microinverters, we're actually getting AC power from the roof. So we had to do an AC coupled option. But there's other times as well where you might have, say, a solar edge inverter where you need to upgrade that inverter, but you can't use a different brand. Or maybe you've got a really good quality system like a Fronius 8.2. Yeah, or a SMA or a SunGrow. Yeah, so many different reasons reasons why an AC coupled solution is just going to be there better for the re retrofit. Yeah. So, okay, go over those again. So end phase, if you've got micro inverters, yeah. we're going to need to do it if you've got micro inverters. Solar edge, either rip the solar edge system off, don't put a solar edge battery on, put this one on. Yeah. And frankly, only Franklin will do if you've got solar edge. Yep. So, or SMA, what do you think about that? Like if we installed a Pronius battery or SMA battery or SunGrow battery five years ago, yep. it's a perfectly good inverter. What's the issue? Would you put a Franklin battery on that? And Look, generally I would recommend it doing against doing an AC coupled battery system because when you can have a, you know, where, where it's a direct connection to the battery, all the uh, DC couple, generally works better for backup. Uh, it's a bit more efficient. It, it is just a much more modern solution. Okay, so you would switch your old Fronius or SMA inverter out for a new Fronius hybrid inverter. That's generally, yeah, so that's what we generally recommend when we can do it. And the thing is, these batteries are not cheap. You know, this is a, a premium battery from the USA. Um, you know, it, it's a quite an expensive way to get a large amount of storage because you're basically buying two inverters, two batteries. These are, uh, yeah, it generally works out more cost effective to yeah, okay. a couple. Um, but if you really are idealistic and you don't want to throw out your perfectly good Fronius 8.2 kilowatt inverter, yep. you can AC couple it into this battery. Yeah, 100%. Which is probably not a bad idea too. It's maybe not the most financially savvy idea, but, you know, whatever. Yorick, there's a lot of bells and whistles in the Franklin that we sort of mentioned. Um, what do you love about it? So, so the A-gate is really clever. So we've got a few features that we just don't get with other battery brands like, say, the Tesla, where we've got smart circuits. So we can back up the whole house. You know, it's WH whole house backup but we might not want things like the hot water system draining the battery in a blackout or all the air conditioning so we could put say the hot water system on a smart circuit use it as a timer to control the hot water when we're connected to the grid but then in a blackout if that battery drops below say 80 percent it then disconnects that hot water system from that backup circuit and it will no longer accidentally drain your battery in a blackout so it basically allows us to separate the house into the most essential the less essential and then the least essential using the smart circuit modules. Yeah, because if you're in a blackout, but you've got three days of blackout, but three days of sunny days, you may as well heat up your hot water and run your hot water, right? E exactly right. And But if you if it's a rainy, miserable day, you might only want to have your lights in the fridge run.
running. Now, we mentioned the warranty in this, did we? Not yet, Mark. So that was the other thing that they do a bit better than the Tesla. They've actually had a 12-year warranty now for quite some time, whereas the Tesla is only 10. Now, I know you're not a big fan of long life. I love extending warranties. Let's cap it at 12 for batteries. Yes. But look, it's a long-term investment like a lot of these things. And so customers want this long-term support. It is not just the batteries that have got a 12-year warranty. It's the gateway as well as the internal smart modules that are inside that gateway too. You know what I really liked about the Franklin talking about bells and whistles is the app interface. So, you know, the Tesla app is really good. A lot of other apps I kind of find frustrating because I'm not used to them. The Franklin app was just so intuitive. So when I was doing my round trip efficiency testing, I could just tell this battery to discharge at 300 watts for like 48 hours or something, whatever it took to discharge this. And it did it. And then I told it whatever rate to charge it up at. Came in this morning and the customer was talking about the really cool features of the time of use. In other words, time of use, what I'm talking about is that sometimes you get um, charged, you know, 30 cents for power. Sometimes you might be able to buy power for free. Sometimes you might get charged. 50 cents for power at, at, at lunchtime or whatever, at, at dinner time. That's great. Yeah. So if we compare it to, say, Tesla, which is a very close competitor, we just put in the prices we pay at what times, and then Tesla figures out the rest, which mm. works great for a lot of people. But if you are being a bit more tech savvy, or if you know that between a set time, you get paid a high feed in tariff, well, with the Franklin app, you can actually tell it what to do at what times while still putting in the prices you pay and the feed in tariff you get. It makes its best recommendation, but then you can force it to do different modes. And they've got really nice little diagrams exactly explaining exactly what each of those modes does. It's incredibly user-friendly. Mm. I couldn't recommend the app enough. Yeah. You know, another thing that you got excited about, you called me up and you're talking about this generator input. And, and I'm like, you're ex- who's going to have a diesel generator at the back to make sure that your batteries charge in a blackout on a rainy day? You know what? I would. It's a bit more than a generator input, right? Yeah, definitely. So, look, almost all the cars coming out of China now, all the electric cars coming out of China and the ones coming out of Korea, these have got vehicle-to-load capabilities. Now, I've got that in my car. Now, what you can do with a Franklin battery is you can have a generator module or vehicle-to-load module. They're the same thing. And basically have a little genset input, and it will pull power from the car or generator to run the house, charge up the batteries. You don't need a $7,000 vehicle-to-grid char- capable charger. Um, it, it's about five or $600 for this module, and I think it's a very clever feature that this battery has because if you do have a week-long blackout and it's rainy weather and I've got a 50 to 100 kilowatt hour battery sitting in my car, hey, suddenly my batteries have gone from 27 kilowatt hours to 127 kilowatt hours. That'll get me through a whole week. It's set up in some cars, not in my Tesla, by the way, but some cars have that... So that you can go camping, right? So you can run your toaster or your kettle when you're out camping. But this, you're saying you can plug that lead then into the generator input of the Franklin. Correct. You can't do that with your Tesla Power, or, but you can do it with this. Nice, nice feature, nice bells and whistles, I reckon. Yeah. Okay, yo, let's go on to the install part because you were here with your super special MC Electrical shirt that gives you superpowers to install batteries, right? I sure was, Mark. So, look, to I properly understand these systems, I like to come to site and actually, you know, sit with the guys and talk to the guys about, you know, the installation. I was here for emotional support and get some B-roll this time. But, you know, it's a great way to see where things go right, where things might not go so right. And actually, the first thing we found out when we got to site is those batteries are really heavy. We are heavy? 130 or so, 185 kilos or 230. 30 kilos, according to the sticker, yeah. we could not get it off the truck bed, which is this high. That was 85 on a spec sheet, 285, 35 on the box. Either way, it's damn heavy, right? It is <laughs> damn heavy. So we ended up having to go down to some local mechanics who are friends of mine, and we used their forklift to lift those batteries off the truck, put it into the van, which is much lower, and we had to drive back here and slide the uh, batteries out at a much safer work height. So a tip for young players, just make sure you know how to get the battery off the back of the truck before you rock out. They do give you a really nice trolley. They do. Um, they, they lent us a trolley for our first install um, and apparently you can manual handle that off the back of the truck just make sure you work it out of the at the warehouse before you come yeah, out yeah i wouldn't be doing it on site and um, yeah especially if it's a big high truck bed like this I, I think for the first time use a forklift or get it in nice and low yeah so the install apparently was all really smooth and, and pretty easy yeah especially because you're super power sure <laughs> um, now alan alan did an excellent job and he was very meticulous with it and except it. except there's one little line in the install manual that goes oh just make sure you put a neutral link between Mark. the neutral from off-grid and the neutral from on-grid. He did the training beforehand and he missed this one little line that says whack a neutral link in, which was really annoying. To be fair, Franklin was supposed to be here on the day, but it kept, the days kept on changing so they didn't make it and they were going to help us talk us through that. Yep. But what they want is to put this neutral link in between the off-grid neutral and the on-grid neutral and we have to link that together. 
why they don't put that in in the first place, like from the factory, I don't know. They've got some stupid reason about regulations or something like that. But even if you don't put it in, just give us a neutral link and put a big label on it saying, don't forget to put the neutral link in. Or have a sticker in the Franklin that says, don't forget to do this. Anyway, a little bit frustrating from your Franklin, but no big deal. We got, we got over it. <laughs> Apparently it happens all the time. So anyway, install was pretty, pretty free, pretty hiccup free. There was little issues that we don't really need to talk about as well. Now let's get a little bit more into the testing that I've been doing, the no, round trip efficiency no. test. What have you got here, Mark? Yeah. So this is a data logger where I'm trying to work out the round trip efficiency of a battery. So okay. basically what that means is let's say I put 10 kilowatt hours into this battery. Yeah. It's it, just for easy maths, right? Sure. 10 kilowatt hours into this battery. What do you think I'm going to get out of it? Uh, 10 kilowatt hours. Yeah. So it's actually, you know better than that. Yeah. But what we would all think in the industry, and I've asked this down in solar conferences, right? Everyone thinks, oh, you'd get nine and a half out. You'd get, you know, 90% out or 95% out, something like that. And that's what we kind of are led to believe with marketing and stuff like that, right? Mm. So it depends on how fast. So we put this in the perfect condition that we okay. fast charge it and fast discharge it. It'll give us around about 88%. Okay, that's not bad. That's actually pretty good. Yeah. If we put it into a, what my test is, is a little bit more real world condition. So we discharge it at three kilowatts, a three, uh, 300 watts, yeah. sorry, and we charge it uh, at five kilowatts. So give it the best conditions for charging and the worst conditions like standby load at night. Yeah. So an average of those two would be... Why do we do it that way, Mark? Why, why charge it fast and discharge it slowly? Well, it's probably realistic that a, that a battery is going to charge fast, relatively fast, with excess solar power. Yeah, because not always. When the sun is out, you'll get five kilowatts. Yeah, not always. And we're still going to s- partly discharge it slow. And quite often, in the worst case situation at night, you've just got 300 watts of standby power. So that's sort of the reason that I've done this test. Yeah. So that test there, we went down to less than 80%, 78% efficiency. Okay. Now, I was actually surprised about that because what I thought is, well, first we've got an AC coupled battery, but this test didn't really disadvantage this battery for being AC coupled mm. in the first place. Did you forget your lunch, Mark? And I, and I forgot my lunch. This is actually my battery um, cell, right? Yeah. So it's around about the size. Uh, the battery cells that these um, Franklin batteries use are these huge commercial grade cells. Yeah. So that's a 200 and 80 amp hour cell. That's a lot of storage in that little... Well, I don't even know what 280 amp hours is, but if you calculate that, yeah. it's basically almost a kilowatt hour of power yeah. in it. So they use 16 of these. Um, oh, well, it'd be, what, 50 volts for the whole battery pack? Yes, exactly, because these are 3.2 or 3.4 volts each. You multiply it by the 16 in series and you only get 15, 50 volts. Yeah. Okay, the problem with it only being 50 volts might be the first step, right? Yeah. Okay, because these your inverter, the top part of it, wants to invert the power when it gets it, it wants the power at about 400 volts or so yeah so we have to have a step up not only that dc to ac to dc to ac problem yeah we have to have a step up from our 50 volts to our 400 volts okay now that's a dc dc inverter you lose a little bit of efficiency when you're doing that um especially when you're doing it slow right yeah um so first first off you're losing power with that the other problem is i mentioned these are sort of more traditionally commercial size yes. batteries I think right what generally have them water cooled in those big commercial racks yeah water cooled or air cooled or whatever they do these battery cells are just going to heat up more because they're energy dense. If we compare this to the new Fromius Reserva battery, I'm mm. pretty sure they've got 30 amp hour cells. Okay, but they must have lots of those little ones. Lots of them together, yeah. Or SunGrow uses 50 amp hour cells. Some use 100 amp hour cells, right? Yeah. But they're much, much smaller, so you need a lot more. So the cooling is better and that, but also you mentioned the voltage. Yeah. So if we string like a hundred, um, or yeah, it, well, I do those little 30 amp hour ones. Yeah. yeah run a hundred of those. 320 volts. 320, 340 volts at, yeah. at fully charged. So you're naturally getting up to that voltage already and you don't have such a big jump to you do your DC to DC conversion. So there are yeah. two levels there where we're losing efficiency. So given all that, you would think. That means that Fronius is better, more efficient than this, right? But my understanding is it was about the same. It was about the same. I'll <laughs> tell you why though, right? Okay. First, we didn't take into account this as an AC coupled battery because that's <laughs> not how the test can work, right? Yeah. So it'll be a li- less efficient because of that reason. Um, the second is that this is a five kilowatt inverter. Yeah. And we tested it compared to a 10 kilowatt Fronius oh, inverter, right? So the Fronius was maybe at a disadvantage. The Fronius was at, at a disadvantage compared to this test. Yeah. Um, so in reality, this is going to run um, not quite as efficient as Fronius. But I was actually super impressed with all my theory that works out most times when I'm looking at these cells that this Franklin battery, I think the design of it that they were... They, they didn't try to cram in everything. They didn't try to have the inverter straight on top, heating up the top. Yeah. Um, it actually ran relatively efficient uh, compared to what I would have thought. Talking about 
you know, the energy density on them. These are big batteries, Mark. Yeah, yeah, exactly. These are these are huge. I mean, compared to my Powerwall twos, I reckon I could fit two Powerwall twos in one of these in the in the same footprint as one of these units. Yeah, exactly. And people, it's like we're trying to make the batteries as small as we can. I don't know that that's the smartest thing because we are just then forced into getting these really big energy dense prismatic cells, hmm. cramming them all in together. Oh, don't worry about heat. You know, it'll sit, it'll sort it out. But if you want long, longevity. Uh, you know, less energy dense is quite often the way that was going to work better. Yeah. So, no. I, yeah. I, said, I mean, look, while they're really big batteries, they're a very nice looking battery. They're very similar to like a white good, you know, like a fridge. I, I love the fact that they've got this, you know, LED light down the side here, showing yeah. the state of charge. Um, exactly, yeah. You know, they, they are very cool to the touch, which is a nice thing too. So we're not losing, you know, huge amounts of efficiency there, I don't think. One little ad I want to do before we end, uh, yours is I also have tested the SIG Energy battery. Oh, did you? Um, tested it in what I thought was a fairly fair comparison, mm-hmm. given the fact that we tested a 20 kilowatt inverter with 48 kilowatts of battery okay. and discharged it at 700 watts. That test gave us sort of around about 60 or less than 60 percent reactor efficiency. Very low. Which is low. Yeah, a little bit unfair. I don't. I think it was fair. A fair comparison, actually, okay. the way that I did the test. But I won't know until I get a 10 kilowatt SIG Energy inverter. So if there's anyone in Brisbane that's got a 10 kilowatt SIG Energy single phase inverter um, or three phase for that matter, it wouldn't really matter, yep. uh, hit us up uh, down in the comments. Uh, I'd love to come out with my data logger and we'll find out how efficient your battery is. It'd be good to get SIG Energy's number, numbers up a little bit better than 60%, I think. Yeah. Uh, anyway, but we'll be doing a deep dive video into round trip efficiency. We will. We might have, we surface covered the, the efficiency in battery cells and we're buying some battery cells in to explain how, how cells work a little bit better. Um, so stay tuned for that, I guess. Yeah, the same tune. We'll like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Catch you next time. Catch you next time.